Master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. Your skin grows cold from your first glimpse of the enormous beast. It's a product of your imagination. Survival depends on a quick, decisive move. Your choices are limited. Stand and fight, or run. Use your lightning bolt. Victory is yours. Win the treasure. TSR Hobbies. Dungeons and Dragons games. Products of your imagination. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the video. You're thinking right now, wait, Rich, this isn't comic books. What is this stuff? And also, I want to just say real quickly, welcome to my channel. If you've never seen any of my videos, I'm, I'm a professional comic book artist, and uh, I'm branching out my channel a bit um, to some of the influence chains that um, will lead you to comic books. And uh, one of them that is highly, highly influential to um, many, many um, creative uh, people in my field is uh, Dungeons and & Dragons. And uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that follow my channel that have some experiences with it. And if you haven't, it's an amazing, amazing game, but even if you don't play the game, I think that when you hear the stories of how incredible it is and how creative it is, um, it's really going to, it's going to hook you. And I think this is going to be a really fun series of videos that, um, will, uh, inspire you to not only draw, but, uh, create and write and, uh, use your imagination a lot more, um, so, uh, my introduction to Dungeons and Dragons was when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Uh, the first time that I became aware of it, um, I happened to be walking through the lunch court of my school, elementary school, they call it. I always say grammar school. I don't know. Um, and, uh, yeah, this, this kid that I knew that lived a couple of blocks up the street from me, I uh, was sitting at a lunch table with his notebook out and he had this <laughs> stack of books and uh, notebook paper and dice and all this kind of cool looking stuff. And uh, I went over and I was like, Greg, what are you up to? And he said, playing Dungeons and Dragons. And so he explained it to me a little bit that day. And uh, I was just fascinated with it. It sounded so crazy and so cool. And there were these amazing books with all this great art in it. And uh, yeah, it just kind of, it it really captured my imagination. And, um, you know, as a comic book artist, what I found is like a, a real simple example and one that many people will know is like Jim Lee and Brandon Choi were really big Dungeons and Dragons fans as kids. And in fact, a few years after I got to Wildstorm, we started playing Dungeons and Dragons up at Jim Lee's house. If I'm not mistaken, I actually think that I was DMing those games. I can't remember exactly, but I'm nearly sure I was. But anyway, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these books a little bit. I'm going to kind of spotlight certain, certain things. Um, and, uh, like if you're just a Dungeons and Dragons fan and you've stumbled upon this video, um, I think that this will be interesting. So these are, these are, um, uh, like the first gen of the game, not literally the first gen, but, but this was kind of first edition. Um, there's, uh, things that went on before Dungeons and Dragons. I won't get into the full history of it uh, in this video, but, um, anyway, so, so, and, and I'm not even going to explain how to play the game. It's not really about that. It's about, it's about the creative engine that it creates for, for someone that is interested in this kind of thing. So if you take comic books as an example, it's a passive uh, pastime, meaning that you read stories about other people doing things. What's incredible about Dungeons and Dragons is that there's these incredible stories that you participate in. You're the characters. You have everything to risk. You have everything to gain. Um, you start off uh, like a normal person, essentially, with a few items, and you build it up. And you can become a hero over time, uh, or, you know, you could get killed, uh, you know, <laughs> halfway up your little sort of goal goal ladder of, of what you sort of dream that the character would be. And, uh, you know, it goes all the way up to gods and demigods. And, and it's just, it's absolutely incredible. The scope of the game is, is literally infinite. Um, and uh, I think a, a slight lead in to this type of thing for me, at least, was the Choose Your Own Adventure books. If you've ever seen those, so as a kid, they would have these books and they were pocket books. Um, and uh, you would come to scenes in the book and you would get to choose what you wanted to do. And then you would switch to a different page based on your choice. And ultimately, you would, you know, survive the adventure or you would be killed <laughs> or it would end poorly, you know. And, uh, so, um, 
what what I'm going to do is is I'm just going to show some of the art in the book and then uh, kind of cover sort of what what was really incredible about the book. So what I thought we would do first is we're going to look through the Deities and Demigods book. Um, there's two editions of this book from, from the first edition. Um, one contains actually copyrighted material that they ended up having to remove, which is um, the Cthulhu Miss and the Melanie Bonet, um, Michael Moorcock stuff. So there's Lovecraft and... Um, uh, Michael Moorcock uh, content in here that they had to remove. And, and, and I, even earlier iterations of um, the game had stuff um, from Tolkien. But but this is not a rip-off game by any means. Um, what they did is they basically created a completely immersive world that you could really take in any direction you want. And all, ultimately, there was science fiction. There was... Um, it really branched out far, and and honestly, your imagination limited, you know, was the only limits of the game. So here, let me uh, pop this open real quick. So I'm going to start with the Melanie Bonean um, mythos, and and the reason being is this was a really, really um, engaging section of this book, and for a couple of reasons, and I'm going to get into how the influence of Dungeons and Dragons really. Um, impacted like myself in particular, but but um, when I met Travis Sheree and we got to know each other better, um, one thing we had in common is we loved uh, John D's artwork. This guy was just a phenomenal like spot illustration guy, and these little drawings just it it set into motion such a powerful um chain of events like in my mind the whole game did it just it was it was incredible so when i originally started playing um we <laughs> was funny is so i never went to church as a kid but a friend of mine um would go to church in sunday school and at sunday school after sunday school he would play dungeons and dragons with this group of kids and the this guy who was probably in his first or second year of college was the dungeon master and he was amazing. And so I started going to church with my friend, honestly, just to play Dungeons and Dragons at Sunday school afterwards. And uh, it was, it was real funny, but we did it for a while. But Brian was such a good DM that when he wasn't around, um, we had to figure out what to do. And ultimately I stepped up and was like, all right, I, you know, these are gigantic shoes to follow. And, and I was only 11. The guy was probably eight or nine years older than us. Um, but, uh, I stepped up and started writing my own modules and stuff like that. And, and, uh, anyway, so, so these, these John D illustrations, what's crazy is this guy is actually on DeviantArt. Um, he, he, uh, does commissions and, um, like recreations of these pieces, but, um, you know, Elric is just an absolutely incredible character, and uh, I've actually started listening to the books on tape while I while I work during the day, and um, they're really really cool. I'm actually going through the first book right now. I'm nearly done with it, um, and his his sword, Stormbringer, is just in incredible. Um, and if you ever played the the module White Plume Mountain, there's a sword that's similar to Stormbringer called Black Razor, um, and uh, you know, got Arioch and Moonbloom and just, I mean, it's just really, really so fun and so creative. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was just like, you could, you could interact with any of this stuff. That was the thing is, is it's, it's difficult to explain. Like I said, I don't want to go through the whole game um, in this first video. So let's take a look at the Monster Manual next. So the Monster Manual is basically um, an encyclopedia or compendium <laughs> of, of suggested monsters that you could use in your different dungeons and, and adventures, you know, depending on if you're, you're outside or inside. I mean, it was everything from centaurs and and unicorns and pegasus to bugbears and owl bears and um you had mind flayers and <laughs> like beholders i'll show you some of the stuff in a little some of the uh, carrion crawler i don't remember them all and and some are like that's a manacore that's a griffin i mean some some are, are known things and some are things that were created specifically for the game depending on i think ultimately like where they own that's a troll um and and some of these drawings may look a little primitive but but uh there's there is definitely a charm to them uh and um what i was gonna say is uh let me have to see this one all of this stuff was just so incredibly exciting. And, and I mean, 
things that I got personally from Dungeons and Dragons was was it really really increased my vocabulary. I mean, I noticed even as a kid, I was like, man, I'm learning all these words that like just other kids my age wouldn't even, you know, wouldn't even have at their disposal. It was it was just crazy. Um, you know, you're learning history, you know, fiction and nonfiction. You're you're learning um uh you know classic literature you're learning um mythos and storytelling um there's a lot of memorization that you ultimately end up doing for the game which is really really good for your brain and then um you know there's there's mathematics involved and then a lot of creativity that's the thing is this just this just brought out i think the best in everyone and uh, that's why it's so incredible incredibly important and such a a key element of who I am as a creative person. Um, you know, when, when, when I go and see a movie, I don't want to sit and watch a movie. I want to create a movie. It was, as a kid, it was very, very difficult for me to sit through films because if I started getting inspired, I didn't want to watch star Wars. I wanted to make star Wars. Um, and, and I think that, that things like dungeons and dragons sort of brought that out in me where it was, it was, I could create stories. I could be the actor in the story. I could be the hero. I could be the villain. Whatever I wanted to do, I could do it. And and it was just so incredibly engaging. This was a really amazing section of this book. So these are demons. <laughs> and it's just like crazy. Like you read the background on them and, and uh, this breaks down their abilities. And, and essentially what it is, is you're given a, a series of statistics and, and um, you know, like, you you have like sort of a strength and and an armor class it's a little difficult to explain like i said i don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of the game right now um but uh oh orcus man this guy's so crazy succubus oh yeah that's what i'm talking about <laughs> this guy's cool but yeah, I mean, and, and the other thing that it got you doing as a kid is is drawing and painting. So let me show you these really quick. I had I I found a bunch of my um, I think they're called lead figures, but uh, I'm trying to zoom in on this little guy. But check this out, man! I was like nuts. This thing is so small. But it was really really fun to paint. Let me see, let me see the detail on this helmet. This guy. <laughs> Why do I flip him around? His sword, his sword is crazy. I don't know what I was thinking there. Like, it's some sort of a magical ability. It's a little washed out on the camera. I'm not sure how. Uh... But even like his shield, it's got like some nice detail. I was, and you know what's funny is like the color blending that I did in his, it did in his hair. How I got that effect was was um, from being a kid and doing poster art, like those colored black and white poster arts that you get with pens. Um, I would always want to have like really, really like um, you know realistic or kind of airbrushy looking hair, and um, was really difficult to do with markers, especially markers that didn't really blend. And um, so uh, I would, I would, um, you know, like do strokes of different colors and try to blend them that way. It's funny seeing this now, I would totally have done the runes on the sword um, with a different color, but hopefully you can see these. Okay. It's, they're little, they're really cool little figures. Honestly, I, I'm going to buy more and paint some just for fun for like, like a little bit of a release. And here's a little demon guy. But yeah, I mean, so it's it's like like oh, hopefully this is rekindling some memories for people that uh, actually played the game, and for people that didn't, um, you know, I'm not I'm not suggesting that you go out and you know buy like fifth edition or whatever it's on now, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you just, you had great art, creative storytelling, um, you know, that that fire that creates imagination, and uh, if you're a fan of of comic books checking out some Dungeons and Dragons, whether it's just like you just listen to some videos on YouTube of people talking about it. Very, very inspirational, man. I'll tell you what, I brought in all my Dungeons and Dragons stuff. I filled two shelves on my bookshelf with it in here and moved out a bunch of art books uh, for a little bit. And just having them in my office, like it literally helped me finish Blaster Kid. Like the script from for Blaster Kid was, was close to being done, but I was kind of stuck on a few things. 
and just bringing in the Dungeons and Dragons things and having that shift in my my thought process of telling a story and not trying to write a comic was huge and and I really credit Dungeons and Dragons for for making me kind of who I am um through throughout my life like uh it's been it's been really really influential and uh I thought I would share it and like I said I'm going to go through other stuff so maybe one day a week or one day every other week um I'm going to go through Dungeons and Dragons stuff and I'm actually I bought a few of the new books uh and uh, I want to go through them I bought uh a really good one on um the drow elves and um another one um what was it oh maybe that was the only one there's a there's another uh, there's a new game out called new numenera uh and i wanted to check that out it's pretty interesting it's a more of a science fiction like one billion years in the future game it's per looks pretty incredible but so before i wrap this video up i wanted to ask have you played dungeons and dragons and if so what was the first uh what was the first edition that you played? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. And then if you haven't played Dungeons & Dragons, is it something that you would ever consider? Um, I'm just showing you some of the other stuff that I brought in. I brought in about two years worth of uh, Dragon Magazine subscriptions. Um, all my modules are sort of pegged in here. It's a little hard to see the modules from the side. But uh, I brought in quite a few uh, modules. And uh, yeah, yeah. They go very, very nicely with my comic book collection. There's no two two ways about it. It's it's uh, awesome. And uh, I honestly, over the next year, I'm going to get more. Oh, what's that? Wildcat Street Smart. I know that guy. That's Richard Friend and Travis Charest. All right. You guys have a great day. And uh, I love you all. And uh, yeah, let me know. Did you ever play? If so, when were you introduced? Okay, bye.